Welcome back to the channel folks and to another painting guide and something a bit different from all the usual field grey or camo that we're painting for our Germans we're going to be doing some Volkssturm here, some Berlin local militia I'm going to be painting these following my normal layering approach which means I have to give a shade colour as a starting point and I'm going to be using my usual German camo black brown but I'm also going to be using black black is going to be for the areas that are going to be well black I suppose but also grey and blue because the German camo black brown won't really work for the greys or the blues it just doesn't look right you need that deeper shade we're going to be using much more colours than we would normally use to paint German infantry because there's civilian clothing here but there's also still quite a bit of field grey some of the figures have very much got German uniforms some have got great coats, some have got tunics and trousers so we're going to be using for a bit of variety and to really get that sort of mixed up last minute put together look we're going to be using different colours of field grey in this example I am painting the great coat with German Tank Crew 2 from Panzer Aces. that's a field grey colour and if you're familiar with how I do this layering you'll see me mapping out the shape of the uniform you know painting almost like just painting lines everywhere in your first pass and then in the second pass going in to really define the high points and the shade points controlling the shade so that it's just an accent it's not the main colour, the main colour has to be this uniform colour and as I said I'll be doing a mixture of the two different types of field grey like mixing up caps, tunics, trousers so it's a proper ragtag look and if you're not familiar with my approach it's important to stress you need to be patient and not try to get a large area like the uniform down in one coat you're going to map it out and you're going to come in with a second coat where you're going to really define the core shape of the uniform by that I mean the shade that's going to be very very small and controlled and then we're ready to do the highlight now the highlight for the German tank crew 2 is from Panzer Races again and it is Africa Corps as you can see I'm painting very fine lines which needs a fine brush with a good tip it also needs the paint to be correctly prepared on your palette so that it will flow neatly off the brush leave a opaque that is you can't see through it an opaque line thin line of paint that isn't going to spread it's going to sit on either the high points or for the most high contrast result right beside your shade line so you've got a line of dark then a line of light then your main colour and that way you'll get the most accentuated depth and shape the other field grey colour I'm going to use is actually Panzeris's dark mud it makes a very good field grey I find it's quite a rich colour compared to the tank uniform 2 from Panzeris's and I'm highlighting this with green grey which is a great colour for highlighting green it lightens but it doesn't brighten you know it doesn't give a neon look to things but it can really help make things pop now we're going to the black areas on the figures I've already undercoated these with black and when I say undercoated because I'm going to highlight up from there I'm going to use German grey and I'm going to be careful how I'm applying this I still want the thing to look black but you need to also give it a little bit of depth so just a few lines drawn across the areas that we would maybe put much greater highlight onto if we were doing a more obvious greenish or brownish kind of colour but this is just to lift the detail out a little bit without making it look too light keeping it black, keeping it dark then it's back to the fine brush with some very fine lines of London grey and we're not talking a lot here at all folks just for those highest points maybe just on like the hem of the trousers you know the highest um, folds of the sleeves and so on just enough to give a little bit of extra shape to those dark areas but you'll see the final outcome still looks nice and black and we're going to apply that same process to the metallic parts of rifles machine guns and so on 
once again keeping that highlight to the minimum so that it just helps make the thing pop rather than dominate the finished look. Now for some browns. I'm going to be using browns on the trousers and on the jackets and I'm starting with a really nice dark chocolate brown colour. We're still going to be building this up over two coats remember folks, mapping out the shape and then coming in to give it a final definition. And the highlight colour for the chocolate brown is going to be flat earth. Now on to dark grey. Now this is nowhere near as dark as German grey. It's more of a medium kind of grey colour to be honest. I'm going to use it on coats, we're going to use it on some of the trousers but not too many of the trousers. And for highlight we're going to be using London grey. And back to some browns, this is a good colour for the coats I find. This is new wood. And to highlight that, German Camo Orange Ochre. And now for a bit of blue, I'm going to be using Luftwaffe Uniform. This is a natural kind of colour for coats, maybe for a few trousers, but it could also be that they've actually got some stock of Luftwaffe uniforms that are being allocated to them too, because they were taking stuff from everywhere and anywhere, so it's a nice good complementary colour. And as a highlight for this, I'm going to be using Azul, which is a very light blue. So once again, be careful how much you're putting on here so it doesn't look too stark. And for some tan coloured coats, that old favourite of mine, Old Wood. And the highlight colour for this will be Iraqi Sand. Some of the figures have socks and I've used green grey with a highlight of deck tan for this. You can also use that colour on the scarves. And you can see I've also used reds and blues and other colours, you know, just something complementary to the palette that's already there on the figure. Now to the important armbands. I've started by giving them a coat of black so they're going to stand out nice and strong and have the right background colour and then I'm giving them a line of red on the top and the bottom of that black band. And then just a small raggedy line along the centre of the band. Nothing fancy here folks. Whilst I'm not going into the other details that I covered in many other videos such as the rifles and the faces and so on, I'm going to take some time to talk about the Panzerfaust because there's quite a lot of them here. I've started with a shade coat of old wood and then I'm going to apply the main colour which is Middlestone. It's going to take two coats again for this folks. Then as a highlight it's going to be deck tan and that'll just help make all the little components that make up the Panzerfaust just pop out from the background of the figure. And that'll be the end of the guide folks. Hopefully you found it interesting, found it useful, gave you some ideas for your own project or maybe gave you the idea of doing this as a project. There's a slideshow of completed pictures coming right up folks if you want to catch that. So it just leaves me to say thanks for watching. Thanks to all the subscribers out there and to you folks who just drop into the channel from time to time to see what projects we're working on. If you want to help the channel grow, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell button and that also means we'll definitely see you all on the next one.